like to welcome both of you and um like to welcome one and all. It's good to see you all in the house of the Lord. And on the Friday day you have off from work, you could be home sleeping. But as David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And though the enemy had plans to disrupt our service today, hopefully to cancel it by sending fire, God is able. Amen? And as I said before, a blessing the late is not a blessing the night. Amen? Amen. So I want to give God thanks and praise. It's going to go before the throne of grace because uh, we just want to. We already have placed things in his hands, but we don't want to take anything for granted. Amen. God is the one who enables us. We can do nothing in ourselves. We are just vessels in the masses and we are but the clay and he's the potter. Bow with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, God, for this glorious opportunity you have given unto us, O oh God. We are in a time of peace. We can come and gather as a body of saints. Father, where we could come and, Lord, celebrate before you. Father, I pray that our sacrifice, O oh God, of praise that we have offered up to you would have been pleasing to you. Yes. Father, I ask, O oh God, that now that as you have received our praise and our worship, O oh God, as we sit before you now, O oh God, we pray that you will speak to us, O oh God. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our understanding, Father. I come against everything that will try to hinder, oh God. Father, I come against the wandering mind, oh God. Thinking about food and thinking about what you're doing later, anything else, God. Help us to focus on, for this short period of time, focus on you, God. That, so that we may have ears to hear, oh God. Take away the distraction, Father. We bind all the forces of darkness, oh God. All the princes, of, um, princes and principalities, Lord, that inhabits the high places above us, oh God. Father, we pray that it will be a clear pathway. From us to your God. Father, if you have to send, oh God, a Michael, oh God, so that Gabriel can get the message through, oh God, whatever the situation, oh God, let the path be clear that we may receive from you this day, oh God. Father, I pray that your word will be planted on soil that is well prepared, oh God. Lord, break up our fallow ground, oh God. Let there be no stony soil in heart, oh God. Father, but our hearts will be, Lord, as springtime is, Lord, kept for, Lord, for the planting of the word. Father, I ask that you will just have control Continue to have control in all that we do, oh God. And Father, I pray that when we leave this place, we will not be the same, but we will be drawn closer to you. We will have a greater appreciation for what you did for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you would turn with me in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 53. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Isaiah chapter 53. Amen. And for you who are in Bible study, that's an easy one to find. Amen. Isaiah 53. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, we are in Bible study. We are, we are focusing not on just knowing what the tool does, what the tools, you know, different tools do, but where to find the tools. Amen. So when they said to turn to Haggai, Habakkuk, or Nahum, you know where it's at. Amen. If we say Titus, Philemon, but if we say turn to Hezekiah, you know that ain't real. Amen. That's only a name of a king of Israel, not a book. Amen. So if we turn to Isaiah chapter 53, and we're going to read a full chapter. Amen. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall go up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground, he has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and he was not, and, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, 
and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. And, the, and there made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich all at his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He was put, he has put him to grief when he made his soul an offering for sin. He shall, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul. And be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and was numbered with the transgressions, and he bore the sins of many, and he made intercession for the transgressions. You may be seated. Hallelujah. We don't want to talk to you on the topic of the ultimate sacrifice. Amen. Amen. We are here today because of what Jesus Christ did for us back on Calvary. He didn't have to do it. God is complete in himself. God was not lonely. God does not need anybody to make him feel like God. God is God all in himself. But for some reason beyond our knowledge, in the ends of time, God decided to make mankind after his likeness and his image. Amen? And he created this world as we know it today. The heavens and the earth. He created and he gave it to man to have dominion over it. In it he placed Adam and Eve, a perfect union. Amen. Giving them dominion over all his creation. Say, this is your sphere. This is your kingdom. You have reign. You have rulership over it. And God would come down and fellowship with them in the cool of the day. Amen. God made only one stipulation, one law, one rule. He said, rule and have dominion. Eat what you may. But this one tree, thou shalt not eat of. For in the day that you do so, you shall surely die. And we know the serpent, the enemy coming in the form of a serpent, deceived Eve. And likewise, Adam followed. And there came a falling. Therefore, thereby, death came. The word of God came to pass. Now, they didn't physically fall over dead. But death was never in the picture of God's creation. He was not intended that man should die. Amen? But they will live forever in this paradise called Eden. Amen? But after man's sin, we were separated. And because of it, we have many curses. And as time go by, things get progressively worse and worse and worse. And we see God at many times coming in and I guess you could say did a reboot. We saw in the days of Noah how the Bible said the intent and the action, the thoughts, and the, 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 the action of men were desperately wicked. Every thought was evil. Evil. There was no consideration for the creator. So God came. He brought in the flood. We saw Noah just eight people being saved. When the Bible said, why is the way that leads to destruction? And many there were, and few that are on the straight and narrow way. See the comparison. Eight 
compared to all humanity that was alive at that time. That's why we have to contend with all we have to make sure that we are one of those few. Because it's not the masses that are going to make it in. But anyhow, to go on. Even before the creation of the world, because God is all-knowing, He had already made provision for our redemption. Amen? Because man in themselves could not redeem themselves. Amen? But God had to allow man to see that in ourselves we couldn't do it. So what he did, he gave us laws and regulation. He gave us the Ten Commandments. He gave us the covenant that was handed down through the children of Israel as he made a promise through Abraham. And we know the story. And they could not keep the commandments of the Lord. Amen? So God said, I will make a new covenant. Not like the old covenant. But I will give them a new heart. I will take away their stony heart. And give them a heart of flesh. But this was not possible with man in his present state. God could not give man a heart of flesh. A heart that is responsive to his spirit. The Holy Ghost could not have come and enjoy us. While we are living in trespasses and sin. Even though our intentions may be good. We did not have in ourselves what it took to live pleasing to God. So God promised us a new covenant. And it started to take place when Jesus Christ came on the scene. And he walked the streets of Galilee. He walked the streets of Jerusalem. And he manifests himself as being the son of God, yet the son of man. The mystery of God. Some people get confused because we try to understand God. You cannot understand God. That's why the Bible said the just shall live by faith. It's not based on understanding. Because to understand God, we'll have to be out of this world. We do not have the capacity to understand the mystery of God. When we see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we are saying, how could three be one? How could Jesus Christ be in God and put off his divinity, all his, all, all his authority? But let's say put it off, not, he still was God. But he came and be, became a part of his creation. Imagine you making a model structure of a, a town or a city. And then you go and now, Become part of that model that you made. He became part of his creation. He took off his divine nature, so to speak. And he became, he put on the robe of flesh. He came as a child of Abraham. And he walked the face of the earth. And he did many things to show to us that he indeed was the son of God. There was no need to doubt him. Because he did what had never been done before. By his very words, he proved that he was the son of God. Amen? And when he said he was the son of God, and they said, they were ready to stone him. Because he said that he's the son of God, he made himself equal to God. The Bible says he taught it not robbery, to be equal to God. Knowing that he himself is God. I said it's a mystery. Because how could God call out unto himself? How could God be separated? But God is God. Paul the apostle says, said, we know in part. We see to a glass dimly. I want you to focus on not on the specifics of Godhead, of the Godhead and our salvation as to understand it. You will never understand it. Amen. You got to receive it at, by faith. I'm not saying blind faith. God have given us enough. He have showed us enough that we can have confidence. That he is God. I do not understand why so much of people want to understand God in every detail. Before they could give their lives to him. I want to ask all of you out here. How much of you know how a car transmission works? How the rubber in the tire stays together? What's the composition of the material, the iron, the different material? 
How much of you know in every detail about electronics, the mechanics, the physics, the chemistry that goes into making your vehicle workable? How many of you know every detail? How many of you? But yet, I'm not seeing you out there walking the street and say, I will not drive in a car because I don't know every detail. I don't understand everything. So how is it when it comes to God that we need to understand every single detail? You see, it, we, the enemy gives us excuses so that we could go continue to take pleasure in unrighteousness. And we don't know that what God has for us is a billion times better than what we are currently partakers of. Giving your life to Jesus Christ is the greatest thing that anybody can do. Amen? Amen. And I want us to look back right now and the sacrifice that Jesus Christ paid for us. Amen? Think about it. Jesus himself was God. He created the heavens and the earth. Yet when he walked the streets of Galilee, when they finally arrested him, the Bible said, He who had bread with me have lifted up his heel against me. You see, many of us have a very difficult time dealing with some people, some of so-called friends. Because people who we have trusted, people who we have been dear with, they have been dear to us. You know, we they are friends. And yet, they turn the back or they, they, they betray us. And for many of us, we have cut those people off. We keep our distance from them. Amen? But look at God. The Bible said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And if you know the word of God, you know God does not take pleasure in works of unrighteousness. Amen? In Psalms 5, we talk about God hating the workers of iniquity. Every action that we were doing before we came to Christ was displeasing to God. You don't reward bad behavior. Amen? In parenting, it is said that you should discourage bad behavior and reward good behavior. Amen? But God, because of His mercy, not because that we deserved it. He chose to give us another chance. I don't want to say a second chance. Because many of us, I would say all of us have run out of our second chance. We have had many, many, many chances. We did a hundred chances, maybe even beyond. But God, still, in his love and his mercy, came and he died for us. Jesus Christ. Think about Jesus Christ. Think about the, the self-control that it took. When they took him and they arrested him in the garden. Amen. Judas who sat with him, ate, you know, at food with him, was even given the ministry whereby he went and he, he, he delivered the gospel. Amen. He was partakers of that ministry when they walked the streets of Galilee. Amen. He was part of the crowd. Yet, for 30 pieces of silver, he sold out his master. We gotta be careful. Those who are close to us, if the price is right, they may just sell us out. Amen? Amen. And, and yet, there he was with the, with the, with the, with the enemy, with the, 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 from the high priest. And the scribes and the Pharisees that they came in the club to arrest Jesus. And even in that garden, even in, in that, just in those moments, you would think that it would stop and consider. When Peter took the sword, and I think it's Marcus, his name was, or Marcus, whatever his name is, and cut off his ear. When Jesus tell him, put the sword away. And Jesus reached down and took that ear up, put it back on and healed that guy. You would think that they would see at that point, hey, this is truly the Son of God. Let us, let us reboot. Let us, let us reconsider what we're going to do. But no. Because the Bible said, 
For this very reason Jesus came. To give his life a sacrifice for us. So it had to happen. And they took him. From that night. Usually when you are arrested or charged with something. They put you in holding. Amen. And when the appropriate time comes. Then they bring you before the court of law. But they were so zealous. That they couldn't wait. From that night. Jesus went to so many different courts. From the religious leaders. Then when morning came. Then they delivered him over. To the Romans. And you know what they did to him? They mocked him. Imagine the one who has your, your breath in his hands. He who holds your very life. And they're mocking him. The Bible said that he, he, his face. His face was this figure beyond recognition. Isaiah 52 and 14 reads. Just as many were astonished at you, so his vicious his, his, was mad more than any man, and his form more than the son of men. The Amplified Bible says, For many, for many the servant of God became an object of horror. Okay? Just to look at him. Many were astonished at him. His face and his whole Appearance were mad more than any man, and his form beyond that of the Son of Man. But just as many were astonished at him. What did it to Jesus Christ? The Bible said, the Bible said, he gave his face to those who pluck out his beard. He was tortured. Yet, as a lamb before the shear, he didn't open his mouth. We know that Jesus had some reservation, so to speak. When the humanity came out in him, he went in the garden and he prayed intensely. He said, Father, if it's possible that this cup could pass without me taking it, drinking of it. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. The Bible says he, his sweat was just flowing as if he was wounded. Just flowed. So intense. He was in such a place of desperation that he, 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 he said to the disciples, pray with me. And when he came back, his three main disciples, they found him sleeping. He said, are you sleeping? He said, indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But so intense was his prayer. But then in that garden, he made up his mind. For this reason I came. And I'm going to go all the way. Amen. Jesus went. And after the priests mocked him. They, 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 they blindfold him. They slapped him. They spat in his face. And they said, you the son of God. Who slapped you? Who hit you? And they were making fun of Jesus. And can you imagine? This is the Christ. The creator of, the, of humanity. And here are these idiots hitting him. And mocking him. And don't know. What he could do to them. When Peter was willing, was about, when wanted to fight, he said, I can ask my father to send a legion of angels. If you read back, back in the Old Testament, when the Assyrians were coming up against Israel, I think it was in the days of Hezekiah the king, and, and Isaiah the prophet, and when the king of Assyria was saying, Oh, who is Hezekiah putting his confidence in? Is he putting it in the Lord? Don't you know what my father and myself have done to all the nations of the world? Were any able to withstand me? And they brought the letter to Isaiah, to the king, and the king brought it to Isaiah. And God said, he will not even shoot one arrow in this place. God sent one, one single angel and totally annihilated the army of Assyria, that the king returned home shamefaced, it, and then his son, two of his son, raised up and killed him. One angel wiped out a whole army. And Jesus, I could ask my father, said, a legion of angels. That would be enough to wipe out the whole earth. But Jesus said, but the scripture must be fulfilled. 
So Jesus was resolved that he is going to go all the way. And regardless to what they did to him, he was not going to turn back. So great was his suffering. Imagine, you know, it's nice to, when you do certain things and you do it well, you are presented with a crown. Amen? Imagine a crown of thorn being placed on your head and being pressed down, piercing your skull. Blood is coming down. Your beards have been plucked. You have been slapped back and forth. The Bible said they even took, when the, the, the angels, the full garrison, made fun of him, said, Hail, King of the Jews. They mocked him. They put on a robe of purple on him. And they mocked him. They abused him. So bad was his suffering that when he, the time came to make a process, the procession to go from where he was being held to where he was sacrificed, where he was crucified, he couldn't even bear the weight of his cross. They had to get someone to bear that cross for him. Amen? And when he went through, the, 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 the soft-hearted, the loving woman, the woman, they looked at him and they weeped for him when they saw what, what they did to their master. He said, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for your sons and your daughter. For if they do this when it is green, what will it do when it's dry? God was saying there's a time of judgment coming. Amen? He was willing to put his suffering aside and yet think about those who he was being sacrificed for. Could you imagine? I don't know if it was here or it was there that the nails went in. But while still being alive, for no wrong of his own, he was nailed to the cross. Now, just in case you guys are thinking that he was God, so he had some kind of override switch, whereby he didn't feel the pain. No, he was very man. You remember when he met the Samari, the woman from Samaria? The Bible said he was thirst, he was rested. Amen? Jesus had all the emotions, all the feeling, all the, everything that we have. He had all the senses that we have. Amen? He was man. And every pain that we would have felt, so did Jesus. I'm not saying this ever happened. But if there was a day when he was working with Joseph and he missed the nail and hit his finger, not saying that that happened, but if that did happen, he would have said, ouch, because he would have felt the pain. Because he was very much man. So when he's going through all these sufferings, he was physically feeling them. And because he had a, a purpose to fulfill, he actually endured more than any of us could have endured. Because for a regular human being, chances are we would not have made it to the cross. But because he had a work and a work to do, he bearded and persevered and did not let go of the spirit, did not give up the ghost until he had finished everything he had to do. They mocked him. They put him on that cross. He's bleeding. His beard had been plucked. His, you, if you didn't know that it was Jesus on that cross, you could not recognize him. You had to have previous knowledge that I was Jesus the Christ because he looked nothing like him. And I know a lot of the portraits that I try to portray of Jesus, that he was a handsome guy and whatever. The Bible says when we look at him, there will be nothing in it that we should desire him. Amen? Chances are he was not a very handsome guy. But he gave it all. Regardless to what he was, when they, when they, when they finished with him, after being abused by the high priest, by the scribes, by the Pharisees, by the Romans, he was totally different. And the nailing to that cross. And that was not enough. Imagine, you've been crucified. And they're not happy that they're, they're mocking you. If you are the son of God, come down and we will believe you. And you know that wasn't true, right? 
Do look at what Jesus did. Their hearts were so hard that they would not receive him. They mocked him. They made fun of him. He saved others, saved himself. We read Psalm 22. Amen. It, it tells you some of the things that happened when Jesus was on that cross. Amen. He said, my God, my God, in verse 1 of Psalms 21. He said, my God, my God, why have, the, uh, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? And from the words of my groaning. Jesus was groaning in pain. You know what happened to Jesus during that time when he was on that cross? When the sins of the world was placed upon Jesus, God no longer could look on his pure, undefiled son, holy. The Bible says he was tempted in all ways as we are, are we, but yet without sin. There were no iniquity found in him. He is the only person only walk the face, ever walk the face of the earth from beginning to end sinless. There were two other people who started out sinless, but somewhere along the road they fell. Talking about Adam and Eve. The only three human beings in all creation who ever experienced perfect holiness or sinlessness. That was Adam and Eve before they fell. There was no sin nature in them. They were perfect. And then we said Jesus from beginning to end. We saw the first Adam messing up and we said the last Adam going all the way. Amen? And now all the sins, the thing that God hates with a passion. God hated sin so much that his judgment was the soul that sin shall die. And that was not physical death. I got news for all of you. You are not just a physical being. You have a soul that does not die. When God created mankind, he created us as eternal beings. When we die physically, it is not the end. We live on for all eternity. The difference will be, where will it be? With him or away from him? In his perfect peace or in his perfect torment? We are going to live forever one way or the other. We all will have to give an account. And God hates sin with a passion. If anybody has sin in their lives and it has not been dealt with, then that soul will be lost. And there's only one way to deal with the sin situation, the sin factor. And that's the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no other way. The blood of bulls and goats and rams could not do it. That was a temporary covering. This thing is so major that even those who have faith in God and believed in God and was pleasing to God and lived a life that was pleasing to Him, when they die before Christ went to the cross, God could not even allow them into His presence. They had to go into a holding place. That is no longer there. Not purgatory. It was called Abraham bosom. Or paradise. Amen. That was the holding place where the saints of God went before. Christ shed his blood. Because the blood was not yet applied. And to the altar in heaven. And God did not say I am pleased with it. So sin was not dealt with. Fully as yet. So that when it's holding place. That's how great God despised sin. That even though we live the life that is pleasing to him. Until the sin factor is dealt with. Totally. They couldn't even come into his presence. They couldn't go into glory. Amen. But when Christ died. The Bible said he went into hell. And he let captivity captive. He went and he preached the gospel to those who had died before. That they may be judged according to man in the flesh. Amen. And to just God is so good. So that there will be no doubt in our mind that this actually took place. The Bible says after Christ was resurrected. That many of the patriots 
was seen walking the streets of Jerusalem. Because Jesus had taken the keys of hell, death, and the grave. And he had let those souls go. Because now his blood had was shed. And now they could go into the presence of the Lord. Now when we die, there is no holding place. Amen? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The Bible said there's a cloud of witnesses who are looking down at us. All those who die in Christ right now, they're looking from the heavenly portals and looking down at us and saying, yes, it is worth it. You can make it. Do not let go. Hold on. Persevere. It's worth it. Amen. And Christ had this in view. He know we didn't deserve it. He hated sin. Yet, he gave his life a sacrifice. He laid himself down for us. And when the father saw in the past the blood of the goat and the sheep and the lamb and everything else, he said, this is enough for me to cover you. This is enough so I could hide the sin. But when Jesus came, he said, the Bible said, the son of man was manifested. Not that, that, that he was cover or suppress, but that he may destroy the works of the devil. The blood of Jesus Christ brings remission of sin. You know what that means? When you go into remission, when there's remission, there's a totally removal of. Yes, we are, we were sinners. We said all are sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. But when Christ came on the scene and he offered up his blood, when he suffered for us, bear the mocking, the scorn and everything, don't care what they did to him. Don't care how terrible, how horrific it was. He bear it, even the shame of the cross. The Bible says, curses anyone who die on the cross, who hangs on a tree. He had the lowest of deaths, but he did not budge because when he was on that cross, he was thinking about you and me and all humanity. He said, I am the only way that they can make it in. And it doesn't matter what price I have to pay. I will pay it. Don't go there and mock me, how they tempt me, how they make fun of me. I will persevere. Even though I do not like them for their bad behavior. But because of the hope that they will have in me. Because of what I can do and make of them. You see, God is not interested in us because of who we are. He's interested in us because of who he can make us. Amen? He can take a mad vessel. And he could take it into his father's house. And he could remake it as a vessel of honor. Only vessels of honor are going to make it in. And only Christ could make vessels of honor. It doesn't matter the form or the deformity of the clay. He is able to make you into vessel that is pleasing to him. Amen. So with all this before him, in his mind, he said, it doesn't matter what I'm going, what I'm going to go through. I will go all the way. Because I have a love that supersedes my hate. Amen. Because he said, I'm going to give them an opportunity to come from under the banner of my wrath unto the banner of my love. Amen. And this was accomplished on the cross of Calvary. When Christ died on that cross, I don't only want to look at it as such a horrific scene that he suffered so much. You know, there's some people, they despise the Roman, they despise the Jews for killing their savior. But this was predetermined. Amen. Christ was offered up before the foundation of the world. Amen. There's many prophecies that speaks about Jesus Christ coming. Where he was going to be born. The time he was going to be born. Things that he would do. That not one of his bones will be broken. Amen. That he will be born of a virgin. That they will pluck his beard. All these things. Psalms 22 was not written after... The Gospels. It was written before. Amen. These are prophetic utterances. 
They planted these garments, casting lots, and all these things. God knew what would happen. Amen? And he foretold so that when it happened, we may believe. And I don't want to just look at him as a man suffering and say, oh, what a pity. He was God, yet man. And he, he took on the sins of this world. And he died. And the Bible said, just that when God was instructing Moses, when he took, when he was on the mountain, he said, make sure you make everything according to the similitude, according to the pattern that you see. Make it in this same pattern. The, 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 the temple, the, 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 everything that Moses did, it was an image of the heavenly. So Jesus went and offered himself his blood on that altar. Remember when Aaron would sprinkle the blood? Remember all those thousands of animals? Remember how much sacrifice it took just to dedicate the temple? And then after dedicate the temple, they have to dedicate the priest, and then have to dedicate the, 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 the vessels and everything. It was a lot of blood. But the Bible said all that blood could not have done a perfect job. It took the blood of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus went and offered his blood on the altar in heaven, the Father was well pleased. And guess what happened? He said, wait. Remember before Jesus was resurrected? He said, carry and wait for the promise. You know what that promise was? The ushering in of the new covenant. Amen? Because up until that point, remember Jesus said, the Holy Spirit, the world, the, the world do not know him because they don't, they don't know him. They don't know Jesus and they don't know the Holy Spirit. But he said, the Holy Spirit right now, he is with you. But then he shall be within you. You see, the Holy Spirit could not inhabit anybody because we were not pure. We were sinful. We had a heart of stone. And the Holy Ghost cannot dwell with sin. It meant that sin, you couldn't just cover the sin. You know, if you have a sore, and you just cover it over, you still have that sore? Even though you can't see it? There's some of you ladies with your makeup, you have some spots and everything, and you take whatever you do, you cover your face, and your face is nice and clear and smooth. But if somebody wants to come and wipe it off, there goes the spots again. But you see, with God, he wanted, the old covenant, it covered the spot. If you look at sin as spots. But the new covenant, the blood of Jesus Christ, it didn't cover the spot. It removed the spots. Amen? So now, the Holy Spirit, after the blood were applied to the saints' heart, the hearts were now pure. The heart of stone became a heart of flesh. So now the Holy Spirit will come and inhabit. Amen? And no longer do we have to walk around following rules and regulations. But we look inwardly to the leading of the Holy Spirit. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Amen? We are led now, not by our mental capacities, but we are led by the Spirit of God that lives in our heart. Amen? You know, in the Old Testament, they, they, they hid the, 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 the Word of God in their heart that they may not sin against God. And they tried the best that they could. We also do have to hide this word in our heart, but we have more than they did. But now we have the enjoyment of the Holy Spirit who could bring everything back to our memory and not only bring back things from our memory, but he could also teach us new things, things we didn't know. Amen? So when Christ died on the cross, he made it possible for us as sinners to become pleasing to God. So, yes, see the price that he paid. It was the ultimate price. And God will not take lightly anybody who trample on the foot the blood of his son. Be very careful what you do with Jesus Christ. Amen? It was not the blood of, the blood of bulls and goats and ram, but it was the very blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us. Do not count the blood of Jesus Christ as a common thing. It is not. It has the power to change your life. 100%. Don't be confused like Nicodemus. Thinking you got to go back into your mother's womb. But he has the power to change you 
hundred percent. You see, God does not look on the outside. The outside means nothing to God. When God says you become a new creature, a new creation, He's not saying that all of a sudden people will not be able to recognize you. The inner man will become new. It starts from the heart to the outside. Amen? That blood has the power to give you a new beginning. The things you did before, you will do them no more. It's because of the finished work of Calvary. Amen? And that's what God had done for us. He had given us the power to become holy. Peter said, in Second Peter, he said, I mean, the second epistle of Peter, he said, God has given us all things that pertains unto godliness. He has given us his divine nature. When you do not know God, and when you walk in ignorance, you go on saying, oh, you know, I have a sin nature, you know. Sin is in me. I'm only a man. No. If any man is in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. God has given us of his divine nature. The blood of Jesus Christ have came into our heart and have changed that heart to a heart of flesh, a heart that is spiritually motivated. He has planted his seed in us. We are now children of the living God. Sin shall not have dominion over you because you're not under the law, but you're under grace. And grace is not overlooking sin. That's mercy. Mercy brings us into the grace of God. But the grace of God enables us to live spiritually pleasing lives to God. God empowers us. It is God who wills to do it. And his good pleasure in us. It's not in us to do good of ourselves. But it's God working through and in us. Amen? This is what Christ accomplished when he died on that cross. As horrific as it looked, do not just look at it on the natural. See what was accomplished. That the old covenant was brought to an end and the new covenant was ushered in. And Christ paid a great price to bring us this new freedom. Amen? This power. So when we think about today, yes, I want you, don't, don't, don't demean our lesson in fact. Or what happened to Jesus Christ. Imagine being on trial. From the evening. To the morning. Back to the afternoon. Being persecuted. And being abused. Amen. And still holding on. Because he's thinking. There is brother mine. There is sister. There is this one. There is that one. Who one day will need my redemptive work. In their lives. And because of that, he did not lose heart. Amen? And that is why he went all the way. Today I want us to look back at Calvary. It's a very sobering time. Because it's when the rubber met the road. You know the God that's saying that when the going get tough, the tough get going, they actually run away. But Christ did not run away. He stayed put. And he allowed the abuse because he was thinking about us. He took off glory and he came into the form of a man. And he walked the streets. He lived a life, an example. Not only God said, you should do ABC. But he also led by example. He showed us that it could be done. Jesus said the things that he had done, because he go back to the Father, we will do greater things. Amen. We have what it takes to be pleasing to God. And it's all because of Calvary. Amen. Because three days later, on Sunday, the stone had to roll away. And Jesus came forth in glory. Amen. And there's some farmers among us. Amen. There's some Peters among us. But when you see the reality of what Christ did, it doesn't matter what you used to be. You will see yourself as a new creature and you will appreciate the work that Christ has done for us. Remember, the soul that sins will die. But Jesus Christ paid the price and as we appropriate that blood to our lives, we become new creatures. Amen? We can be changed. Stop trying to fish for fish that have no scale, that are very big clean. There is no scaled fish in the water. When you catch the fish, you don't throw it back because they have scales. You're not going to eat the scale, but you don't throw it back. You catch the fish, 
and you clean it up. Amen? Likewise, Jesus said, I'm going to send us as fishes of men. We're going to hook them and bring them in as they are. But God will do the cleaning up. So don't wait until you become clean to give your life to Christ. It ain't ever going to happen. Our works of righteousness are seen as filthy rags. Amen? So Jesus Christ is saying, today appropriate my death, my burial and my resurrection to your life. Otherwise, only wrath and judgment will be waiting for you. Amen? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, God, for the plan that you put in place. It was such a, a difficult plan to implement. It got to the point where it said, my God, my God, why has God forsaken me? Jesus, you were separated when you took the sins of the world upon you. That filth, the thing that you never experienced before, the one reason why you wanted that cup to pass from you, not because of the suffering, you could handle that, but to be mingled, to be messed up with sin, the thing that you hate more than anything, but you took upon you the sins of this world and you totally destroyed it. The power of sin, you destroy once and for all. And you made a way for us to come into your presence in a way that is pleasing to you. God, this was accomplished on the cross of Calvary. No other religious leaders were able to do anything that would appease God over sin. But only the blood of Jesus Christ. You are the only way. There's only one way. Salvation is all in Jesus Christ. There's only one way that man can be saved. Jesus is that way. And Father, I want to thank you for the price that you paid. Jesus, I want to thank you for your obedience, that you went all the way and you finished, you accomplished the work. And now you are seated at the right hand of the Father, just waiting for the words to go and bring us all home. So Father, I thank you. I pray for the souls of those who are here today, God, those who know you, that we will, Lord, we commit our lives to you, that we will see the price that you, you, you the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice that you made for us. And we, O oh God, will become children of obedience, O oh God. And Father, for those who do not know you, Lord, I don't know what they're waiting for. Lord, the pleasures of sin last for a season, but there's nothing compared to the joys of knowing you, Lord. Father, even in the midst of suffering, there is peace. In the midst of the storm, there is peace. Where else can you find this? In the midst of Lord, adversity, there is yet peace and a calm because God is in the vessel. Father, so I pray, speak to their hearts, Lord. Father, it's not in them to save themselves. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will even now start to pull at their heartstrings, oh God. Convict them, Lord. Open their understanding. Show us, oh God. Show them the, the necessity for you that is only by your grace and that your grace is sufficient. All their hang-ups, all their flaws, it doesn't matter. You will make them a new creature. The habits, the stronghold, you are able to destroy every one of them and make them vessels of honor, vessels of righteousness. So Father, I pray that you will help them to yield to you today. And Lord, for those who are serving you, help them to remain faithful to the end and to become that stepping stone and not a stumbling block. Father, for this, once again, we thank you for the cross of Calvary. We thank you for the finished work of Jesus Christ. And Father, we celebrate your death, your burial, and your resurrection. And we will do it until you come again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I would like to give this opportunity. Is there anybody who, as we reflect and look back at what Jesus did on Calvary's cross, we like to appropriate his blood to your life. Is there anybody who are tired of the, 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 the going, doing the same thing over and over and over again? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different outcome. It's not going to change. If you're tired of this life of sin, carrying this weight, it's a weight, it holds you back. It gives the enemy extra access into your life. 
The devil have you like a puppet. Sway any which way he wants. Got your emotion up and down. Got you depressed and happy. All over the place. But you can be stable in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ could change the life. He could make you a new creature. Today is the day of salvation. Today, I'm pleading with you. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Our minister of finance, James Flehati, Jim Flehati, he didn't know that his day was coming, you know. One minute he was with us, and the other minute he wasn't. We don't know. No one knows what tomorrow holds. You must say, I'm trying to scare you. Yes, I am. Jude said some compassion made the difference. Some people come to Christ because of his love. And others, fear make the difference. I want you to be very fearful of God and what God can do to you if you reject him. Because there is no second chance. Tomorrow is not promised. Do not fail to deal with your spiritual death. Before your physical death overtake you. Because when physical death comes on the scene, it is over. That appointment with death, once it's here, there is no second chance. I can't pray you out. Nobody can pray you out. Remember the rich man. The minute he died, his torment started. So I'm pleading, today is the day of salvation. Is there anybody who would like to give the life to Jesus Christ today? Amen. I want to thank you all for coming out today. I don't want you to be too traditional or religious or whatever, but as we have reflected on what Jesus Christ did for us, I want you today think about what he did for us. Think about the price he paid and appropriate it to our lives. Let us live every day in the obedience of Jesus Christ. Let us not grieve the Holy Spirit. Let us not trample on the foot of the blood of Jesus Christ. Let us become children of obedience. Amen. Stand with me, please. God's willing, we'll see you on Sunday. God's willing, there is a good possibility. That we may not see some of you. Because you would have gone the way of the grave. It's a possibility. Tomorrow is not promised. God's willing. If life is spared and health is spared. God's willing. We see you all on Sunday. But God's willing. The Lord bless you. And keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his promise upon you and give you peace. Have a blessed good Friday. See you Sunday, God's willing.